Hello fellow guitar geeks. Recently I've been building a lot of pedal kits on the channel and I've been really enjoying what I was doing and learning a lot and getting better at soldering and all that kind of stuff and even enclosure painting. So what I've got here is the four track fuzz from Fuzz Dog and it comes in this little enclosure itself. They sent this out to me uh, quite some time ago and I'm finally getting around to build it. I'm guessing this is going to be either simpler or at least quicker than the other builds I've done, but I cannot wait to hear what this sounds like because it says it's like cranking the input on a Porter Studio, apparently, which is one of those old four track recorders that I used in the past. In fact, I still own. I bought one uh, a couple of years ago to, to play with, and it does sound disgustingly dirty and nice and fuzzy when you crank the input. If you're interested in building this kit yourself, then there are links in the video description to the kit itself, plus all the tools and all the things that I used to make this work, if I make this work. You know, I'm not guaranteeing that I'm gonna get this finished uh, to a finished pedal. I'm not a pedal builder. I'm just a guitar enthusiast with a dangerous access to a soldering iron. So let's open this up, see what we get inside. Get a free rubber band, that's nice. My kids will enjoy that. That's the enclosure, pre-drilled. Then we've got screws for the enclosure, a bunch of wires, a multi-cable wire, I don't know what that's called, daisy wire. Then we've got the board itself, which thankfully is, is simpler than what I've been playing with recently, but that is smaller. I hope I can get my sausage fingers in there. Then we've got bits and pieces, useful. <laughs> Then we've got the switch and the the daughter breakout board or daughter board. Why do I want to call that a daughter board? It's been making computers in the past. Then we've got two mono jacks, the power supply the socket thingy, and then a Fuzz Dog business card telling you that you should go to fuzzdog.co.uk. And you should. And if you really want to know, this is a Hammond 1590B enclosure. Now actually to get this project started properly, the first thing I'm gonna do is paint the enclosure. So come with me on a journey through time and space as we propel ourselves instantly to my garage. Naturally, I forgot to press record whilst I was spraying, but this is what it looks like after the first coat. Back to the studio. I think the main thing I've learned over the years of building pedals of failing and then finally succeeding recently is that a good instruction guide is the difference between failing and succeeding and then following the instruction guide. So in the past, I've built pedals that haven't had instruction guides and I've just had a photo that I've had to copy. Uh, that was a, a clone from Wish that definitely did not work and there was no chance of it ever working and I I'm not sure, I think I made a video and binned it, and I actually wish I'd aired that video. But um, <clears throat> FuzzDog allow you to download PDFs of instructions and then a general guide as well. So part of this review video is going to be reviewing this instruction guide. And it looks like a simple circuit, so it should be a simple instruction guide, right? Let's put it to the test and build a four track fuzz. It gives you a schematic, but I don't really know how to read schematics. I have a little bit of an idea, but, and I can see where everything's going, but what I really need is an idiot's guide. There we go, that'll do. That's slightly better. As always, the first thing I'm gonna do is tip the parts out, make sure everything's there, and measure the resistors and stick them on a piece of paper. I know this seems like a lot of work and you wanna jump into building a pedal, but this is the most important stage that I've learned to do because all those pedals that I failed with, the ones that didn't work, I didn't do this stage. And I think this is the reason why. So I absolutely recommend, in fact, insist that you do this if you're building pedals. Don't just do it for the resistors, do it for absolutely every part because then when you get to the actual build, you'll know where absolutely everything is. Yes, this is important. Fancy headgear, right? One of these is absolutely necessary if you're like me and cannot see the values on the parts themselves. So you can even get one of these with a light in, but if you don't have either this or one with a light in, fancy, you can also use your phone, which is taught to me by a friend uh, called Jens. Hey Jens. Um, and you can use the camera magnifier with the light on and you should be able to use the, the screen on your phone to see what the values are on the capacitors. So. That's the easy version that everybody should be able to use. Almost everybody's got a phone, right? With a light on it. You should be able to see those parts using your phone. If you want to go fancy or old school or just cool, then one of these. One of these with a light on if you're super fancy. 
Right, let's populate that board and get fuzzing. Up on the top left of the screen is the circuit layout diagram, which shows you R1, R2, etc. And then on the right also shows you R1, R2, etc. And all you have to do is combine those two pieces of information. So you find the slot for R1 on the circuit diagram. And then on the right, you find out which resistor you need. So for R1 is the one meg resistor. And then you put the one meg resistor in the slot for R1. And because resistors can be put in either direction, as long as you've measured your components correctly and labeled them, and then follow these two pieces of information, you can't go wrong. Only the electrolytic capacitors have a polarity, so you have to be careful which direction you put those in. Otherwise, this again is a fairly simple part of the build. And then the final part is this IC socket and then the chip. I made a little boo-boo. I forgot to press record when I was soldering in the pots to the board, but it's fairly simple if you've labeled your parts correctly. So as it shows on the BOM, we've got volume, base, treble and trim all have different values. The pots are labeled correctly, so you just have to find the right pot and make sure it goes in the right place. There's also a great tip in the instruction guide to only solder one pin of the pot and then make sure it's straight before you solder the other three because if your pots aren't straight, it's not gonna fit in the enclosure. But you shouldn't be putting it in the enclosure yet because when you've finished all the components, it's time to test the board. This temporary wiring setup is a great idea to test your circuit before you've added the switch and things like that. If it doesn't work now, then you know that you've made a mistake with your soldering or parts. And guess what? It didn't work, which means I did something wrong with my soldering and or parts. Such a simple circuit, apparently, and I got it wrong. Um, nothing worked. I, it would pass sound. But none of the knobs would affect the sound in any way, and I, I didn't know what to do. So I did some fault finding with my multimeter and, again, didn't really know what I was doing or how to find the fault. I'm not a pedal builder, I'm an enthusiast with a soldering iron. And then what I eventually did was grab a screwdriver and tapped one of the resistors and it turns out I had not soldered that point correctly. And when I moved the resistor with the screwdriver, it made a connection. So I went back and I soldered that and suddenly everything worked. That meant that I could move on and finally add the switch and things. So rather than wire the switch directly to the PCB, FuzzDog give you a daughter board or breakout board that you can solder to instead, which apparently makes the whole thing easier. Um, I actually enjoyed doing that part, but then I hit a snag with that temporary wire solution. I couldn't get the solder out to get this ribbon cable in. So that was a bit of a pain, but finally I got it in. And then the other side had to go to the daughter board. And this was, uh, again, fairly simple. See that? That's an enclosure. Let's put a pedal circuit in it. First thing to do is to add the power socket because I know that's gonna be tight once I get this actual PCB and daughter board in there. Then I realized I'd forgotten to break off these little tabs on the side of the pots. So do that for all four pots. Then the board will fit into the enclosure nice and tight. Then get all the nuts on and make sure all your pots are lined up correctly and the switch into the enclosure. Get those uh, input and output jack sockets installed. Now a tidy pedal is certainly not my forte. My, my main aim is to get a working pedal. So adding these wires and making them as short as possible and still functional whilst being able to get the sockets in and out meant that I had to remove the switch several times to make sure the lengths were correct and it's still not the tidiest pedal in the world. So that's what it looks like now. It's fairly, t I think that's pretty tidy, you know, com compared to some other stuff I've seen around on the internet and compared certainly to my original builds that I've done and failed. Another thing it needs is a little bit of design and some knobs. And whilst looking around my box of parts, I found these parts that I built uh, or I was going to build into a failed HM2 project. So uh, four parts or four knobs, I should say, fit on there nicely. So. Almost happy that I failed with the HM2 build. Let's get those on the pots. In fact, I'm gonna be super confident and put the back on the enclosure. Looks like a real pedal, my goodness. It has no labels on it though, so I need to figure something out there. Okay, I am back and I had an idea. Uh, because this is based on a four track tape recorder, 
I made these little labels. And although simple and basic and not pretty, I think they're pretty cool. So I've got low, volume, high and trim. I think that looks pretty funky. I also found a sticker that I found in my big box of projects that I will never finish. So I think this is rather fitting for this pedal. It says, enjoy the journey. I'm really proud of how it looks considering I didn't have a plan at the beginning. So um, yeah, very proud of that. And I just sort of threw stuff that were found in some boxes. I think it looks good. We need to hear it and see if it A works and B sounds good. But before I do, I wanna review the pedal building experience because that's what we're doing here. Um, reviewing the pedal is a secondary part of, of what I'm doing. The primary part is what is it like to build the four track fuzz from Fuzz Dog. You get the schematic and the parts list. You get the, the layout diagram and you need to combine those two pieces of information, as I said uh, near the beginning of this video. There's some info just here and I underlined some certain important parts and I read through this before I started building. However, I will say that it doesn't hold your hand enough, especially when it gets to the breakout board part. My problem with the instructions comes with when you're using a daughter board. So the instructions itself, the four track fuzz instructions, uh, tell you how to get through without the daughter board. Daughter, I'm so, so West Country on that one. Uh, and if you have a daughter board, um, then you need to download the additional instructions, which is fallen on the floor. And one of the first thing this says in the daughter board is, First things first, do not solder your 2K2 current limiting resistor CLR to the main PCB of the project. It should be soldered onto the foot switch daughter board. It does not say that anywhere in the four track fuzz instructions. And I really think it should because yes, even though I knew that I was using a daughter board, a daughter board, and um, I knew I was gonna put this on, I should have read that after reading that before even building anything. But I think that right at the top of this, of the PDF of the instructions, it should say, if you're using a daughter board, then make sure that you don't put in this, um, this CLR, this limiting uh, resistor. Yeah, it doesn't say that. So I think that's an issue for FuzzDog to hopefully uh, fix at some point. Apart from that, even though this didn't hold my hand at all, it was it was simple. It's an easy fuzz build. It's hard to get a fuzz wrong, apparently, but I did. Um, I think through no fault of my own. So there's some there's some mistakes that I made with the soldering. As I said, it didn't work at first. And then there's a mistake with the CLR, so I had to solder an extra cable. And in fairness, the daughterboard booklet does teach you how to do that and does explain it very, very simply. There's a diagram just here to show you uh, how to do it if you've soldered your CLR into your main circuit and you don't have another, not to worry, just run a wire from the LED plus pad on your main board, which is just here, to the bottom CLR pad on the daughter board, there. That wasn't as clear as I'd like, oh, sorry, there, there's the LED. That wasn't as clear as I'd liked it to have been. It says LED there, it doesn't say LED plus pad. And I'm an absolute beginner to electronics or, or not absolute beginner but near the beginning of my journey so that's that's something I had to figure out for myself again not super difficult but not as clear as instructions I've used in the past so time to make some noise see if this pedal works this is the Jupiter from Valiant Guitars this is going into the four track fuzz which is going into the Fender Deluxe Reverb and some vintage V30s let's just turn that volume down and see if it powers on Please. Yes, we have a red LED. Okay, let's turn it back off for a second and see if we're getting some clean signal. Okay, let's try out the four track fuzz that I've just built. It works. All right, knobs are all down. I I'm so excited that it works. Let's put that about halfway.
That's a good fuzz. That's like a really angry overdrive. It's, I know that was, or oh, that was Oasis, by the way, kind of. Um, it's a bit Mark Bolan. Woo! I like that sound. I don't even. I, I mean, I'm happy already. Let's let's see what happens if we put this this trim up. That's now halfway. It's quite thrashy when you put that that trim up. Let's give it some more bass. That is nice. There's a lot of bottom end coming out of that. Without. With. There's a rattiness to it. It's a bit rat. It's a bit uh, Graham Coxon. I haven't even tried the neck pickup, which is where the, the fuzz source normally lies. Right, I have to do something. I have to go to drop D because the first time I ever heard fuzz in my own guitar rig was whilst I was playing through a, uh, a Tascam Porter studio at school in 1994-ish. And um, I accidentally overloaded the Tascam recorder, which my school teacher, Mr. Napper, did not like. And um, we recorded some covers of Presidents of the United States of America, badly. So I have to play Peaches. <laughs> Actually forgotten how to play that part. Um, 
This is phenomenal. Let's back off that bass and see if it gives us anything like thin, nasty, raspy stuff. <laughs> That's a really good fuzz, and I know my fuzzes. I could see someone easily selling those sort of sounds for 200 euros. I, I, maybe not the design, you know, the, that needs a little bit of work, or, or does it? You let me know. But the sounds, I would happily, happily be reviewing that um, for over 150 euros and saying that was worth it. There is, there's so much scope in those sounds. <laughs> So much bass. And that's how I remember that Porter Studio was like, the bass was full on, you had headphones on, which were probably extra bassy ones, and you could really get some amazingly fat tones. Uh, but I think I like it best, really, about there, that just sort of edgy. That is a good fuzz pedal, and I hope that, um, firstly, I hope that you've enjoyed this video, of course, I'll go into that in a moment, but I hope some of you have the courage and motivation to go and buy one of these kits, because I'm going to be having a lot of fun. There's going to be a lot of smiles on this face because of the work I've put into this pedal. Yeah, so um, that is the, what am I going to call it? I'm going to call it the Enjoy the Journey Fuzz. There you go. Um, because that sums up my journey with fuzz. Oh, here we go. Ah, and the message for today's video is, uh, I'll put some soft piano music in there. There we go. It's not about the destination. It's about the journey and the friends you made along the way. And remember, when you go out into the world, also let the world go into you. <laughs> <laughs> right, um, I've had immense fun building this. It's been quite a lot of work, and these build videos are quite a lot of work, but I really enjoy them. So I hope you enjoy them too, because I want to keep bringing them to you. If you do enjoy them, let, oh, itchy nose. If you do enjoy them, then please let me know in the comments section. But before you drop a comment, this is the end of the video, which means you've reached the end of the video club and to prove that you are a member of this prestigious elite. When you do leave that comment telling me what you think of the enjoy the journey fuzz, also include the word peaches. And that'll let me know that you stuck around until the very bitter end. Right, I will see you in one of those videos over there. Or you can subscribe to the channel and smash that bell and I will be in your inbox regularly. Something like that. Links to Fuzzdog in the video description. Bye-bye.